Let me make sure I get this right. The International Federation of Football History and Statistics has put out a 2022 Men's Asian Team of the Season or Team of the Year, and I want to give my reaction to it. I'm going to pull up the list and react to it in a second, but first I just want to say if you want to see more videos about Asian football, then I encourage you to hit that subscribe button. It is one of my favorite topics to cover when it comes to football in general, whether it's club or our country. It doesn't matter to me. I love covering the Asian game. I think it's incredibly underrated. I always try to cover the most recent news stories coming out of the continent. So if you want to see those videos, again, please hit the subscribe button. It would really, really help us out. All right, guys, here is the list. I'm just going to run through the players real quick all together, and then I'll get my thoughts at, at every level of the pitch. At goalkeeper, we got Shuichi Gonda, the guy from Japan. Three defenders. We got Aziz Behich, Maya Yoshi. Shida and Kim Min Jae. So three different representations in the defense. Midfield, we got Huang Hee Chan as the left mid, Saman Al Faraj, and Daichi Kamada as the center mids. In right mid, we have Takumi Minamino. Let's bookmark that one. We're gonna come back to that one. Uh, taking it to the uh, to the front three, we got Sun Kyo Min as left wing, Medhi Taremi as the center forward, and Salim Aldo Sari as the right wing. All right, now I'm going to go position by position here and give my thoughts, but you guys comment just, just at a glance, which one of these is like the selection that surprises you the most? I know which one is mine, and I'm going to say that here in a second, but I'm just curious to see what you guys as the, as the viewers think about this list overall, but let's kick it off with Aziz Behich as the left-sided center back. Now, if we're trying to be real here, and this is like, okay, this is actually how the team's going to roll out, then this doesn't make any sense. I kind of feel like with Aziz Behich, whoever put this together only watched the World Cup, because I thought that he did have a good World Cup, a very impressive World Cup, but Australia overall as a team had a very impressive World Cup, and he was a cog in that machine now if we take it back to before that in the world cup qualifiers i thought he was a liability half the time i mean in the japan game where it was in sydney junior ito almost ran this man off the pitch it was embarrassing he i actually had to google and make sure that aziz behich was not a semi-professional player turns out he plays for dundee united where he has two goals two assists this season and as a left back i'm i'm sorry that's just not enough it's not enough to make this list. That doesn't mean that Bayhitch is absolute dog water and he should just be, you know, tossed out of the window. If we're talking about Asia's best 11, I don't know a single fan who would tell you Bayhitch belongs in that list. It's a really strange inclusion for me. I feel like they just needed an Aussie to throw in here. And if, if you were going to do that, if you just wanted to appease the Australians, just throw Matt Ryan in here at, at goalkeeper because there's really not a good goalkeeper in all of Asia. And that would have made more sense. I would have understood it. Now, to replace Aziz Behich, we have a couple options. If we want to make it three center backs, then I think the option that makes the most sense is Ko Itakura. Ko Itakura was one of the better players for Schalke in the Bundesliga 2, admittedly, but still a German-European team. And he was a starter for Motion Gladbach at the start of the season before he completely ruptured something. I want to say it was Achilles, but I can't remember what it was. Regardless, came back with pretty much no warm-up whatsoever at the World Cup and played well. And if you, again, if you're going to do 2022, this seems to be a complete body of work. In the case of Bay Hitch, you can't be like, the man played four good games, and now he's in the Asian best 11. That's just completely weird and, and, and backwards to me, and, and discrediting to the players who have had a more complete resume for this calendar year, or I should say the previous calendar year. Option number two is you could put Tomiyasu as kind of a flex right back. Move Kim and Jay to the middle, move Maya Yoshida over, and have Takahiro Tomiyasu as that right back. If I want to talk like 4,000 IQ, I would even be okay with Kim Young Gwan over Aziz Behich. I really just don't agree with that pick at all. Australians, I'm sorry, bruv. What's the tall, the tall guy from Australia? He would have made more sense than Aziz Behich. To me, I just don't understand. At center back, we we got Maya Yoshida, Captain Japan, great World Cup at his age, absolutely outstanding, still playing at a high level at his age, uh, one of the best Asian defenders of all time, and this is not a, a legacy pick. This man is still getting it done day in, day out. I'm completely okay with that choice. And then we got Kim Min Jae, who I, I want to be very clear when I say this. Kim Min Jae is not only head and shoulders the best Asian defender in the world right now. He is also well on his way to being the best Asian defender of all time. If he continues in the current form that he is in, if his career keeps going as it is going currently, he will be the best Asian defender of all time. At this moment, not only is he the best Asian defender, he is one of the best center backs in world football 
period. And so if there is any defender that is absolutely cemented in this best 11, it is Kim and Jay without a doubt. In the midfield, we got Kwang Hee Chan at left mid. I'm okay with that. I don't think he's been absolutely spectacular at Wolverhampton in the Prem, but no player has been spectacular at Wolverhampton outside of like maybe Daniel Podence, maybe. And Asia doesn't really have a lot of left mids specifically to displace Wang Hee Chan. I mean, I'm really struggling to think of who else you would put in this position, so I'm completely okay with that. The only player I could maybe see an argument for over Wang Hee Chan, and it's a stretch, it's a stretch because he's really more of a winger than a midfielder, is Mitoma from Brighton in Japan. But again, I'm not even going to go into details about that because I don't think that he makes sense as a left mid over Wang Hee Chan. And while I think Mitoma has been going off in the past 60 days, I don't know if year-to-year -year comparison he's better than Wang Hee Chan. Now, for doing 2023, I'm telling you right now, Mitoma's going to be in the best 11. If this publication knows anything about, about ball, Mitoma is going to be in the best 11. But 2022 might be a little soon. Now, I might as well just go ahead and put my hater hat on now because Salman Al-Faraj, wow, he might be Saudi Arabia's best center midfielder. And again, I don't think this man is a scrub. I don't think he's dog water. I don't think he's booty cheeks. But if you're, again, picking Asia's best 11, in what world is Al-Faraj in this list? What has he done to warrant being in this list. He's more of a defensive central midfielder. Look, I'm not going to flex and pretend like I watched the Saudi league, but I'm looking at his numbers from last season and I'm just not really seeing anything encouraging. 22 games in the Saudi pro league, one assist, five yellow cards. AFC championship, six games, one goal, one assist. King's cup, I don't even know what that is. I'm going to assume it's the Saudi uh, domestic cup one goal, two assists. In 34 games, the man had two goals and four assists. I just don't understand how that warrants being in this team. I mean, Al-Hilal were the Saudi Arabian champions and they won the Saudi Super Cup in 2022. So maybe whoever put this list together was like, oh, the man won two trophies, so he must be a baller. But I just, I strongly disagree with this. If we're being real and we're being objective, they're, the only defensive mid who makes this list is Bataro Endo, like without a doubt. Not only did he score the goal that saved Stuttgart from getting wrecked relegated but he's just a goddamn bulldog do you know another center defensive mid who wears a mouth guard like he's a hockey player while he's out there i didn't think so watch now somebody's gonna comment like actually there's 17 players i know that wear a mouthpiece well you know more than i do my friend kamada absolutely he's a lock now i will say kamada was a bona fide flop at the world cup like that was embarrassing i had big expectations for this man he did almost nothing offered japan almost nothing in every single World Cup game. But for Frankfurt, I mean, he had the team on his back, man. He has the team on his back. His stats for this season are absolutely incredible. Um, Frankfurt ain't doing as hot as they were before, but that's not really Kamada's fault. I just checked the stats. He's got seven goals, three assists for Frankfurt this season in the Bundesliga, an additional three goals in the Champions League. Look, Kamada, like, without a doubt, there's a reason he's linked to Dortmund. There's a reason he's linked to big clubs in Germany in the Premier League. It's because he's a baller, and he's probably the most dangerous attacking midfielder in all of Asia. Now, I do want to give a shout out to my guy, Igang In from Korea. Now, I think he kind of is blossoming a little too late again to make the 2022. And the 2023 edition of this list, I fully expect Igang In to be in that list. One of Mallorca's best plays, pretty much their, their creative midfielder now at this point, set piece specialist, um, assist god. It's honestly incredible to see, but I don't think he should have made this edition of the list. Now we get to Takumi Minamino, and I don't understand how this man made the list. These are one of the selections so I'm like, were they looking at FIFA ratings? Were they looking at FIFA ratings when they made this? Because no Japan fan will tell you that Minamino should even start for Japan, let alone Asia's best 11. Like, I'm sorry, that's not a reality. Takumi Minamino didn't do anything for Liverpool, whether it was in the Premier League or the Carabao Cup to warrant being in this list. He's a decent player who needs to seriously work on his physicality and his decision-making and his release speed. And, and like he, the player, he's just a very slow midfielder. And that's why he didn't work out in the Prem because you need to make split second decisions and he was just unable to do that on a consistent basis. I'm kind of torn between Kubo or Doan to replace Minamino in this 11. I think I'm leaning Doan, not just because of the World Cup, although that was incredible, but I just felt like his impact for PSV was a little bit more than what we saw with Kubo, um, who I guess for the 
first half of the year was still at Mallorca, actually with Igan in um, before coming to Sociedad. And he's done a lot better at Sociedad this season. So 2023 Risu Doan versus 2023 Takafusa Kubo. It's definitely Kubo right now. But this ain't 2023, this is 2022. So I got to give it to Doan. And left wing, there ain't much to say here. Sung Ho Min, I mean, absolutely. He's the best left wing that Asia's ever produced. He's the best Korean footballer of all time, in my opinion. Um, absolutely integral to everything that Korea's done. I think he's getting clowned a lot right now because of his poor form at Tottenham. You know, and poor form still means four goals, two assists in the Prem. You know, some some players, most of these guys on this list or anybody else in the background who who maybe some haters are going to say should be chosen above Sun Kyung Min, they will never have that kind of output on an off season with Sun Kyung Min. I mean, he's still looking at eight goals, four assists if he continues like this for the second half of the season in the Premier League. I mean, the guy is just an absolute stud. And really, that just says the standard that he has set, that people expect him to be world class. 24 7 because he is a world-class player and i think you could make the argument for two other players in asia being world-class but sun come in without a doubt is the only certified world-class player in asia in my opinion the other two that you can make an argument for are kim and jay and medi taremi i already spoke about kim and jay earlier like i said on track to be the best asian defender of all time medi taremi i feel like if this man played at a bigger club he would be heralded across the world i think a problem with medi taremi which if you look at the stats i believe he has top five goal contributions in europe's top five leagues for the past two seasons or something like his stats are they look like fifa my career stats the guy's an absolute stud iran's best player right now it, uh, honestly a joy to watch got a couple goals to the world cup i was really happy for him i really feel like just iran and their horrible pr across the globe right now really hurts this man i i seriously have no doubt if he's a different nationality a different ethnicity people regard him as world class or he gets bought up by a different club he is completely underrated because he's iranian and people don't want to touch that with the 10-foot pole and it sucks he has nothing to do with it but that's just how it is. And, and you know, props to the IFFHS for including Taremi. Although I will say, if they put anybody else, anybody else at center forward, I don't care if you throw up like Wangi Joe. Like, there was nobody else that you could, I mean, like uh, Asano from Japan. Like, no, there was nobody else that you could have possibly picked except Taremi here. And then finally, we got Salem El Dausari. And I think Dausari is a baller. I'm a little confused, though, because he's a left winger. And I have no doubt that the people who put this together know that he's a left winger. Now, I'm sure somebody's going to comment like, he can play on the right, and I'm sure he can play on the right, but his natural position is a left wing. And I don't think Dasari has done enough to be the starting right winger in an Asian men's best 11. And again, I mean that respectfully. He arguably had goal of the tournament at the World Cup. But if I'm talking best player overall who plays right wing, it's got to be Junya Ito. Let's just do a quick stat comparison. And these are not always really helpful because obviously different leagues, different level of, of difficulty, but still, I just want to highlight this, okay? 2021 to 2022 in the Juliper Pro League, Junya Ito had eight goals and 16 assists. And that's not counting the Europa League, which he also had a couple more assists. So the man was pushing 20 assists that season. Like absolutely crazy. Now let's go to El Dalsari. El Dalsari, in the Saudi Pro League, in 21 games, had nine goals and five assists. So he had 14 goal involvements in 21 games. Junior Ito had 24 goal involvements in 39 games. So one, I can't really give it to El Dasari because the guy played 21 games as opposed to 39. I mean, consistency has to be important here, guys. Longevity has to matter if we're talking about the entire year. In 21 games... Is simply not enough. Now, maybe that's because the Saudi league doesn't play a lot of games. And and I, I don't know how many they play, but bluntly, too bad. I mean, you got to play more games than 20 for me to put you above Junior Ito, who was not only a baller at, at uh, Gank, but has done well since moving to France and did very well for Japan at the World Cup, saved them several times, ironically once against Saudi Arabia in the World Cup qualifier. So I'm not mad that Dasari is here, but I think it's a, it's just a little lazy again from this publication. I would love to hear the explanation for why Dasari was chosen here, because that just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. And um, if you're going to put him anywhere, I mean, I guess this is the only place you can put him because you can't put him in left wing. There's no chance. And he is not a mid. He's not a midfielder. So you can't put him over Kwang Hee-chan. I, I guess 
he kind of got stuck here. But again, for me, it's Trini Ito all day, any day. It's not even a discussion which player I would rather have on my team. But those are my thoughts on the list, guys. You let me know what you think down below in the comments. And like I said, if you enjoy videos like this about Asian football, they're not stopping, man. We got lots coming. I promise that will never be a topic that this channel strays away from. I, I genuinely love talking about Asian football. I mean, look at this goddamn jersey on my chest right now. Like, it's always going to be a major content piece here on the channel. So again, hit that subscribe button if you want to see that. And leave a like on the video if you enjoy it. And it not only tells me that you guys want to see more videos like this, but it tells the algorithm that this is good content. But you know what tells the algorithm even more than a like that this is good content? When you leave a comment. So, you know, just, just tell me anything, any general thoughts about the list. Like I said, uh, I'll respond to every single comment. I always try to do that. Um, I appreciate you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.